hopefully you, re you realize that every year we do the SDN uh, or the, the Service Design Awards and we saw the, the finalists and then the, the winners of those awards. Uh, this morning, uh, we are going to hear more about the, the winners and to uh, welcome those folks to the stage. I'm gonna bring back the, the creator and the leader of the Service Design Awards, Margus Klar. Please welcome Margus. Good morning. Um, this is not my show, so this is the show of the winners, and uh, they'll tell you in eight minutes what they did and how they got their work done. And we start off with, is this clicker work as well? I hope. That one? So we have five awards. We have four presentations because one was not present yesterday. And we start with uh, the student award, which is service designed to improve women's maternal health care healthcare services in Nepal. And we welcome Ida, Julie, and Nora up on stage, please. Great, thank you so much. First of all, thank you all for having us. We are so honored to be here and for receiving this award. Um, there are many people who have contributed and supported us throughout this project. Um, to whom we are incredibly grateful. And we would also like to especially thank our supervisors, Martina, Joachim, and Sangeeta. We believe that service design can be used to help people and create change. That it can change lives. We believe that impactful services can be created that can change attitudes, point of views, and even behaviors. We'd like to share how we've experienced this impact through service design. This project was conducted as a master's thesis focusing on maternity care in rural areas of Nepal. We co-designed and created a new health service for postnatal home visits, which has now received enough funding to go into a six-month pilot. Imagine this, you just arrived in a rural village in Nepal. The village is surrounded by hills with large snow-covered mountains peaking up in the far distance. It takes you one hour to walk there from the bus stop. Along the way, you meet a woman carrying a basket larger than herself, filled with leaves for her cattle. And you wonder, what does her life look like? You learn that she is responsible for taking care of the animals, for all the housekeeping, for caring for her children, her husband, and her in-law family. When she moved in with them after the wedding, she fell to the bottom rung of the family hierarchy. She is seen as a utility. The family makes her decisions, and she basically lives to serve uh, them the best way she can. When we arrived in this village, we knew very little about this deeply rooted patriarchal society and how one in five Nepalese women are uh, subject to domestic violence. Um, we heard stories of husbands mistreating and sexually abusing their wives soon after, after delivery. And many are not aware that this is actually abuse. We also talked to a woman with a critical abdominal complication that she had kept a secret for years while it only got worse. She was too shy and ashamed to talk to anyone about it. Unfortunately, these stories were not unique. Coming from a society where uh, women's rights are far more respected, we had to put aside our uh, emotions and biases 
to really understand the culture. It was important for us to meet and talk with the users and learn from them directly. Because the service should be consistent with the cult user's culture, tradition, and uh, views, uh, we developed the service uh, together with a local NGO called Green Tar Nepal and with maternity experts, local health workers, and users. And while mapping the challenges, we uncovered a great neglect for the postnatal uh, period in Nepalese culture. Very few are aware of common health risks and complications, and less than 20% of new mothers attend the three recommended checkups after delivery. Therefore, we designed a health service aimed to increase the postnatal checkup rates in rural areas of Nepal, which should lead to a decrease in health risks and mortality rates. Our new health service meets users where they are. In this way, the service eliminates challenges related to transportation, finances, and cultural and patriarchal constraints that limit limit women's, um, that prevent women from vital tre treatment. The service emphasizes the importance of postnatal uh, health care and aims to spread awareness. During the home visits, families are directly involved. And that is, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And that way, they are better informed to take better care of the new mothers and the newborn. And it is especially through this direct and inclusive learning that we can encourage a change in the behavior of those making the decisions in the families. And it creates room for understanding and improved care for the new mother during the postnatal period. According to Green Tara Nepal, and other local health workers. The service is scalable to all rural areas of Nepal, about 75% of its geography. And it can help to create a change in general attitude around postnatal care. And the project is not finished. It is an ongoing process, and this is only the beginning. Because this project is about taking a step in the right direction to improve maternal care for Nepalese women. Change requires a joint effort, repetition, and time. And as one of the local doctors we talked to said, no one NGO or person can take credit for a society's behavioral change. But together, over time, they can each make a small influence that can lead to a larger change, making a difference for many. So while our project is tailored to helping a specific group of people at a specific point in their lives, this is also evidence that we all, as service designers, should not think ourselves as limited by culture, language, or geography to create the positive change that we want to see in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, next up, Laboratorie Mobile Alternativen and Twisted Studio and their case for lo-fi prototyping. Come up. Hello, everyone. My name is Marlies. I am from Belgium. Uh, this is my co-founder, Lise. We co-founded Twisted Studio together. And we help organizations create projects uh, bottom-up. 
uh, we do this together. Lise is a psychologist as a background. I'm a digital designer. We met via Twitter, but that's a whole different story. Uh, we already uh, we founded our company in 2016, and the project that I am going to talk about was our very first client, and is still our client today, so that's why we submitted it. Um, the project is called LAMA, which is short for Laboratory Mobile Alternatives, mouthful. But uh, the, the client is actually the network of sustainable mobility. And the network of sustainable mobility represents eight smaller organizations in Belgium who all um, fight for the voice, for example, of people using public transport. Another organization fights for the voice of pedestrians and so forward. So our client, the network of sustainable mobility, they unite these organizations and they make their voice stronger. Uh, all the work we do at Twisted Studio, we always uh, see the client as part of our design team in the beginning, which was more about you know budgets because we work only for social sector clients and they couldn't afford us if we were doing all the work ourselves. So our solution to that, uh, which turned out to be very good in hindsight, uh, was that we always uh, saw the client as part of our design team. So we asked the client to do half the work or even most of the work. And we are beside them, coaching them every step of the way. That's how we do most of our work. So just a raise of hands, please. Who in this room has ever experienced a situation like this? Traffic jams, oh yeah, right? Very recognizable. So mobility is a very sensitive topic. Uh, everybody recognizes it, uh, where emotions can run high, uh, especially in Belgium, as you can see. I don't know if, who is in, from Belgium in this room? Yes, two people. All right. So you guys recognize this, you know, the typical things on the, on the television, like traffic jams. We are, I think, number one in Europe for traffic jams or something. Yay, yay us. So when, when making mobility decisions, uh, cities get really close to their citizens um, because these decisions really affect you know, their, their daily routine, their direct environment. And at the same time, every mobility issue uh, is unique and is a tailor-made solution. But unfortunately, when cities need to make decisions about mobility, they don't often uh, consult their citizens. So that's why LAMA was born. LAMA is short for laboratory, I'm going to say it again, mobile alternatives. And it's a co-creative design process to find bottom-up solutions uh, for mobility issues, very on a local level. So our briefing was to develop like a model trajectory for facilitators with minimal experience in service design. And the project's underlying challenge uh, was to infuse local administrations with the design thinking mindset and open up their decision-making process. So as I said, it was very small budget. We were in the beginning of our Twisted Studio and we were like, yeah, let's do this. Um, so, it really pushed us to be efficient and keep things simple. For sustainability reasons, we also designed our process, so it, the tools we uh, gave to the clients, so they are able to continue uh, without us. So the process is lean and all the developed tools are easy to use and customizable by the client. So uh, the entire project is like yeah, run to research how design thinking uh, may support citizens. Uh, citizen participation in uh, local decision making on mobility and to do that we ran like a very yeah design process in each of these llama cities but it was very lightweight uh, we were involved of course from the beginning in 2016 all the way up until now they are still uh, it's still ongoing and the first year um, the design team consists of me 
myself and Lise, my co-founder, and then three staff members of the client. And the following years, um, we took a step back. We took on a coaching role and we uh, coached the client to do the, the, the facilitation themselves. And so recently, uh, we helped the client identify uh, challenges and a framework for a training program. So the whole process is really designed for us to be less involved, which might not sound as a good business model to business people, but since they are still our client, it kind of works. So let me walk you through what a llama looks like in each city. I do hope, I've, maybe you saw it in the logo, but the, the abbreviation llama is an animal. Is that the same in English? Ah, oh, thank God. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't make sense to have that animal in the logo. Uh, so each city went through the same phases, very recognizable for service designers, of course. It starts off with researching and really immersing ourselves in the local context. Uh, we defined a problem zone because the whole process of uh, LAMA was never to make like a whole new mobility plan for the whole city. It was really tackling very critical issues on like street level or even the level of a borough. And so once we defined a uh, problem zone based on existing data, like you know, amount of accidents and complaints, we identified the stakeholders, we interviewed them, you know, we immersed ourselves in the situation. And at the end of the research, um, we identified the challenges. Uh, voila. And then we go to the ideation. Uh, the end of the research is, of course, the famous how might we questions. We Pose those to the in the first workshop with the citizens. We very important. We left room and time for the citizens to say like, okay, we recognize ourselves in these challenges or not. We want to adapt them or we want to add new ones. And so once we got over that, we went on to the ideation phase and we uh, brainstormed some ideas and some solutions. Uh, in the second workshop with the citizens, we took the ideas from the first workshop and improved them and make them tangible, prototype them, iterate it very quickly so that we can test very quickly in the workshop itself. And then the final stage was testing. Each city, each Lama city, um, they committed to run at least two tests in real time, meaning in the streets with real users. Uh, the start of the test phase is during the Mobility Week, it's a, yeah, a weird name, but in Belgium there is something like the Mobility Week in September and we, it's, a, it's a campaign week that uh, makes us think about our mobility choices and it's a big week in Flanders, it has a lot of local media, has a lot of national media, so we hooked up our testing phase, the start of our testing phase to that campaign which of course brought out a lot of media attention. And in the end, uh, the prototypes and LAMA as a process were evaluated by the citizens. So, of course, we can make improvements. So, what were the outputs? There is a kind of yeah, toolbox with lots of um, templates and, and tools inside. All of them are customizable. We made them in Google Slides or Google Presentations so people can really quickly make it uh, their own. One of the tools I want to highlight is our ideation canvas. So for each design challenge, a canvas is filled with uh, supporting insights and citizens' quotes, as you can see on the left-hand side. So people can recognize where this challenge comes from. And on the right-hand side, there is space for the participants to draw their ideas, to give it a title. And on the back, um, were a possibility to print some personas. Um, voila. Um, so, some impact on different levels. Um, it's um, good to say that, um, of course, you can just read the text on the slide. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it, but um, our main takeaway, impact-wise, that we saw that design thinking was really uh, taken in the local administration, and they used it in other uh, sectors outside of the mobility, which for us was very uh, eye-opening. So, maybe two cases that I want to talk about, if I still have time. Yeah. Uh, the city of Tienen, um, they designed or redesigned a parking lot 
which was a big sore for, this, for the city and the citizens because it was a big parking space, but there was also two entrances to schools. And so each morning there was a lot of, you know, incidents with uh, pedestrians and cyclists and, and uh, people driving cars and they were all like, you know, scrambling through each other. So um, the citizens together, they redesigned this parking. And so in, uh, after the testing phase, they felt a lot safer. There were more, uh, there were less uh, conflicts between pedestrians and bikes. And so this has been implemented. Um, I can't give you any numbers, but it works. <laughs> Uh, then the city of Beveren, this is a case that we learned so much from because in the first co-design workshop, um, the um, citizen decided to like cut a street in half and then there was like this huge protest, there were like Facebook groups protesting this and so forth and so forth. So we learned a lot from this case. Um, but in the end, uh, we iterated on the solution and we, the citizens came up with a, a different solution that was even, according to the mobility experts, even more uh, advanced than cutting the streets. So, some conclusions. We had nine conclusions, but I don't have time, of course, and you, you can read it online. But the three uh, conclusions that were most important for us was that it needs to be clear what the challenge is and the way of working. It needs to be crystal clear for all the stakeholders involved. We integrated expertise, of course, from mobility experts, but make sure that it's on the right time. Otherwise, you know, the, the sense of ownership by the stakeholders is really lost. And then we saw lots of yeah, issues uh, or barriers when there was not so good communication between, for example, the mayor and the elder elderman and the civil servants. So if that is, um, yeah, uh, if there is a strong hierarchy in the local administration, then it's a problem. So um, that's it. Lama is very ambitious. Uh, you can also have a Lama in your city if you want. So please contact me. <laughs> Thank you. Keeping going. That is you guys. Um, next one. The evidence of design 2.0, an impactful service identity designed with AI, and we get Helon, who's been here four times, so you guys know what to do. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, I would like to start by uh, giving a big thanks to our Helen teams in, in Helsinki and London. Uh, we wouldn't be here if in our culture we would not uh, uh, like constantly push the boundaries on, on what we do and how we do and, and thus develop the service design further. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> this case is actually one story about uh, how we see service design is, is developing and how machine learning uh, can uh, play a critical role in its development. So <clears throat> we start the uh, uh, case, our client uh, Mandatum is a, uh, let's say, traditional uh, company in uh, um, insurance and, and um, they had the urge to, to uh, increase customer experience, <clears throat> but since they are professionals in uh, investing, so they really didn't know where to start in, in investing uh, to the development. And uh, for this uh, and these kinds of clients, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> developed a, a approach, we call it return on customer experience, where we combine uh, machine learning and algorithms to make the soft process of, of design a bit more harder and, and really introduce metrics and numbers. Um, and with this uh, case, uh, we started the, the whole case uh, with a extensive uh, 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 data analysis, uh, which was run by our uh, lead data scientist, and it was really about combining uh, different data sets uh, on the company's 
uh, customer feedback, uh, on process performance metrics. We even uh, combined to the, the uh, data model uh, the uh, data from Helsinki and Stockholm Stock Exchange, just to make sure that that uh, uh, kind of to to make the case that whether the stock exchange is going up or down, that it really doesn't influence uh, the customer experience. But it was a, a uh, really uh, uh, intensive uh, analysis, and uh, we actually got out of it uh, a oh, sorry, starting point uh, and brief for the, the uh, whole design process. So our conversion analysis uh, told to us that uh, if we increase uh, the feeling of caring, that the customer really feels that, uh, that his or her issue is, is really being cared for, it will convert two times more customer experience, uh, for example, compared to the, the uh, issue that, that whether the, the customer service is really a professional in their own job. So this was a, a, a clear uh, scope and, and a target for the whole uh, design process that we actually uh, need to focus on increase the feeling of caring throughout the, the whole uh, process and, and uh, customer journey. What uh, we ended up with uh, was a, a whole new service identity uh, for, for uh, Mandatum uh, and, and it really was about how we could increase the, the uh, feeling and experience of, of being cared for throughout the whole uh, uh, customer journey and, and customer process. Uh, and it actually uh, <coughs> consisted of, of several different uh, components in, in uh, different uh, service lines. So it was uh, uh, prototypes in, in live service situations for a longer period and uh, thus iterated uh, and measured to be uh, better and better. And uh, once we uh, got the, the, the uh, service identity uh, uh, ready with all the details, then we started to look at the implementation and uh, put our focus on, on the, the company management, that how can we help the managers to really lead and manage uh, the new identity. And we created a toolbox for the management, which was actually in a form of a manager's kind of annual clock, that, that what are the, the ways that the managers really can perform uh, well in, in uh, leading the new uh, service identity uh, in different functions of the company. And then uh, uh, the next phase was, was uh, uh, to, to implement the new service identity across the whole organization. So uh, in order to make sure that everyone really understood what the new service identity uh, was about and really uh, uh, realized that how they can uh, change their own activities in, in their own uh, responsibilities, we designed, uh, designed a game that was played uh, across the whole uh, organization so that really everyone in each position could reflect from their own responsibilities and point of view that how they will change their uh, activities according to the new uh, uh, service identity. And this was also, uh, we have used a lot of, of gamification in, in our uh, project, so it's also a way to really inspire the organization and increase the sense of ownership in, in those cases. Uh, then uh, we also, uh, uh, regarding implementation, there were some, some uh, uh, agreements uh, that needed to, to be changed for the, the uh, customers, so we did what we call legal design to make the, the uh, customer agreements more approachable, more uh, understandable, and thus also increase uh, the experience. Uh, the results were uh, quite good, uh, I would say threefold. Uh, for one, 
the customer experience, which is the, the NPS, has uh, skyrocketed since. They have been uh, breaking the, the records. Uh, they have breaking the records in, in uh, new business sales and, and lead generation. And the whole organization is now convinced that design is a very powerful means in, in company transformation, which was not the case before. <clears throat> I would like to conclude this by kind of our sharing our vision on, on how we see uh, machine learning can have a, a uh, influence in the future of service design. We believe that with machine learning, the designers can be more scalable. It means that we can handle much more complex and larger data sets uh, as a part of the, the whole uh, design process. And <clears throat> for, for the another, uh, that, that we can uh, increase uh, uh, our ability to predict uh, the impact of our actions. We can pre predict the impact in advance before we start designing, and we can impact, uh, uh, predict the impact of, for example, different service features of a, 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 a um, uh, new service or customer experience uh, during the process. But that's it. I think time is uh, up. Thanks. Thank you. And up last but definitely not least, uh, transforming a social security organization through service design, UC Design School, Brandbook, and Sur Andina Consultoras. I'm probably saying that completely wrong, so I'm not mangling more. No, you did okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, good you. morning. Uh, my name is Benardita. I'm uh, from Chile, and I, can, I don't have the words to express how happy I am to be here, how excited I am, how honored I am to be representing uh, the team that work in this project. Actually, this project by, was made by three organizations. First, uh, UZ Design School, which is where I've been a teacher for like 10 years. I teach design school there. Uh, Brandbook, which is a consultancy firm of design in Chile, in which I am the director of the service design uh, team. And Surandina, who are the amazing uh, engineers that work with us during this process. Actually, Patricio is there. He's, he's an engineer. He's like my professional husband. Uh, the good thing is that my, my real husband, my amazing real husband, introduced me to him. So it's uh, everything okay between us. So... Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, now, uh, but also mostly, I'm honored uh, to be representing uh, this institution, uh, Caja Los Andes, uh, which is a compensation found in Chile. Um, without uh, their team, nothing of what I'm going to tell you wouldn't be possible. There are creative, passionate, committed people that make what I'm going, the story I'm going to tell you possible. Uh, but Probably you are wondering what is a compensation fund, because compensation funds doesn't exist in all over the world. I know two or three countries in the world where you can find compensation funds, and compensation funds are uh, private non-profit organizations, part of the social security system of Chile. Okay, the purpose of a compensation fund is to provide social benefits to uh, workers. How does it work? Any company can get affiliated to a compensation fund and all of the workers that uh, work in the company can get benefits from the compensation fund. And these benefits come in all sorts of form. There are financial products. You can get social credit to a compensation fund, but you can also have benefits in health, in education, they even have hotels, so you, you, you can do tourism with compensation funds. So it's a pretty good institution to support and benefit Chilean workers. Caja Los Andes in particular is the largest in the country. It is the leader of the, the industry, and it serves 4 million affiliates, 4 million workers in Chile, that if you count their families, it ends up benefiting like 8 million people. And Chile is not a big country, so it's like half of our country, if you count them all. So 
Oh, it's a very important institution in our country, okay? And uh, what they invited us to do was to improve the affiliate experience through a, a focus in human-centered design. So this was uh, pretty good for us because in Chile, this kind of approach are not so familiar. So they were like really visionary and innovative to trust in designers to do a change in a, such a big company in Chile. And now Rocio is going to tell you a little bit about the methodology we used in the project. Hi, Bernie. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Rocio Salvatierra. And I'm the project manager, that's why I'm here, <laughs> too. And I'm going to tell you about the process we had. So, um, in fact, we, we actually didn't, uh, like, um, used any disruptive uh, techniques or methodology. We used, like, a traditional service design methodology, but we did our homework, so we did a lot, a lot of desk research. We uh, studied our client, uh, its history, culture, processes, documents, projects, numbers, everything. And uh, we also um, did a lot of um, uh, qualitative research, um, a lot. I mean, a lot. Um, our client did interviews and field observation with us. And I think we think that it's like, that was fundamental for the rest of the project. Uh, we co-created, yep, uh, through the process. Um, we prototyped and we tested uh, service concepts. Um, and then finally, we uh, like accompanied them into the, the, through this implementation process. And I think that there was where the challenge, the real challenge began. See? Um, but the magic, I think, of this project, it's like over there, um, the approach, like this triple mixed approach uh, between service design, operation management with uh, engineers, and change management. That like this vision, this triple vision, um, Dr. Um, Josina told us yesterday that um, like for shaping social structures, we needed to deeply understand these things, like the rules, the processes, the, uh, the laws involved, but also um, the cultural or the organizational culture, uh, the way they, do, they did things. So that was like the magic in here. Um, okay, so for those who do not know Chile, we have a tiny little problem with distances. We are a very large country, so, um, and Caja Los Andes has uh, over 145, 44 branches, uh, so we travel a lot, yes, a lot, and uh, we also studied, like, all the channels that the organization has, um, online, offline, um, and this is what we found. Okay, uh, so, don't be, like, fooled with these photos, because... People really loved Caja Los Andes, loved their products, their benefits, but uh, the way they delivered them, that was an opportunity to improve and to really like uh, being different from the other compensation firms. Um, we uh, also call um, diagnosis because the client went with us for, to field work and uh, we have a team there that work with us every time uh, at every at every uh, step of the process uh, we um, prioritized the problems together um, we socialize problems in these instances participation instances so um, we also co-created the solutions with them and we co-tested also. Uh, and that was beautiful, very beautiful, because their team were with us, like, planning this test, and a lot of things, roles, uh, attention flows, uh, new touch points, new interactions, channels, everything. And they were learning uh, this new way of doing things, and we were learning with them, like, how this organization moves around and how that uh, it w what how how that works um, and the, all the stuff. So, and we picked a garage branch. So we make it visible to the athletes that, uh, in fact, we were like um, 
proving things. And we were like, probably not doing so fine at the first, but we were like trying to improve their experience. And then we pick up a little bit more branches and we do the same, like tested some things and uh, complex, more complex things and then other branches and then we scale that. So this was very important for the project because in fact, we just tested once and then we uh, teach them how to test and how to prototype and uh, in fact they were their their work was to um, the partners of the, the colleagues the the executives and their next branches so okay I learned this it's real 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 good so I'm going to my partner and I'm going to teach him how to do it so that was uh, the surprise here um, and what does uh... well i'm going to talk to you about a little bit about the results actually this was a pretty big uh, project so afterwards we have 45 initiatives to this date we have 17 of them implemented some of them running right now and some of them are they appeared new initiatives okay so there is a lot going on in caja los andes now but i'm going to tell you about one specifically is that we changed the way people were served in branches okay as i told you caja los andes is a very complex uh, organization that has many services but the model the way they served people was very simple and it didn't get all the complexity of the of, of the problem so we invented a new way of serving people in branches and using exactly the same amount of people and technology, we started to have amazing results in the garage brand that Rocio told you. And here's a little bit of the evidence that we got. Uh, and what he's telling you really changed the way that people were served here you can see some executive apple style the executive we made a whole new look and people were really thrilled and after a year of implementation we have some pretty amazing results actually uh, before people used to wait an average of 22 minutes in the branch before being uh, be of having contact with the executive, and now they wait 5.5 oh, minutes. Being Caja Los Andes, as big as it is, we, we, we calculated that we have saved almost 1.2 million hours to Chilean workers, which is pretty impressive. But we did this also having a, a amazing satisfaction. It started really high, 73%, but now it is at 96%. People are really, really happy with the solution. And uh, we also put technology in it, so electronic payment penetration is now at 95. Uh, but behind the numbers, there are a lot of testimonies of people that are really, really happy about the way they are not treated in the branches in Caja Los Andes. But as you can see, there are also executives that talks about how this new model was good for them. And internally, we also had some impact. Actually, because of this new way of doing things, the extra hours were reduced in 40%. And during the implementation process, we discovered a lot of talent within the company. So more than 300 uh, uh, promotions were done. And uh, also, during the, the course of the implementation, we uh, built an app. And people, when were they arriving to work, they have to say how they were feeling. That's called the emotional shaking. So people, when they arrive to work, they say, oh, I'm OK, I'm not OK with this transformation process. And mostly they were OK. But if they were not OK, we could do something about it because we have the information. So at the end, I think the most uh, good thing about uh, this project is that we uh, managed to completely change the culture to a human-centered and a user-centered approach of the company. Actually, yesterday, when we won the award, we told the CEO of the company, Nelson Rojas, and he was so glad that he sent an email to all the collaborators of the company, of Caja Los Andes. And he, of course, thanked us as consultant and the executive team, but the letter was not for us, it was the for, for all these people that participated during the implementation. So I think this is a beautiful thing because this is not our project, this is Caja Los Andes people's project, and that's what makes us more proud about it. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. So, um, in conclusion, congratulations to all the winners again. And please, next year, send in your work because it's getting more fun every year and more challenging to win every year. So, congratulations again.